Uh, well, I can look that up. <sighs> we're here because we're here because we're here because we're here. Is that how that goes? Oh, it was uh, one song? silly songs um, record that we have. <clears throat> <clears throat> With that lady with the lamb, with uh, who wasn't Sherry Lewis? Wasn't Sherry Lewis? I don't care. Good morning. We lamb got to start. Chops, lamb chops. Mm. It wasn't my we need to wake up. Mm -hmm. I am a little sleepy. We're gonna sing number six oh eight. Lord, to you I make confession. Very sad song. It's a happy song. It's a happy song. It ends it's happy. Yeah. Well, it's it's one of those things. Uh, we're, we're having this conversation with with Justin the other day, and it is true that sometimes as Lutherans, um, I, although it's not just us, but we we do focus a lot more on our guilt and, and not quite so much on the value that we have in God's eyes and his delight for us or in us, that for the joy set before him because he loved us so much. So... Hmm. Um, but I'm afraid there's not a lot of uh, the room. The reason for rejoicing in the Book of Judges is complicated. <laughs> I'll put it that way. It's like uh, having a kid that you really. Oh wow. When are the When are they going to learn this? So we're singing, Lord, to you I make confession, number six oh eight. Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son and your grandson also, for you have saved us from the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, and my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And Gideon said to them, Let me make a request of you. Every one of you give me the earrings from his spoil. For they had golden earrings 
because they were Ishmaelites. And they answered, we will willingly give them. <laughs> and they spread a cloak, and every man threw in it the earrings of his spoil. And the weight of the golden earrings <laughs> that he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold, besides the crescent ornaments and the pendants and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, and besides the collars that were around the necks of their camels. And Gideon made an ephod of it and put it in his city in Ophrah. And all Israel poured after it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his family. So Midian was subdued before the people of Israel, and they raised their heads no more. And the land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. Jerub, Jerubbaal, the son of Joash, went and lived in his own house. Now Gideon had seventy sons, his own offspring, for he had many wives. And his concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, and he called his name Abimelech. And Gideon, the son of Joash, died in a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Joash, his father, at Ophrah of the Abias rites. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again and whored after the Baals and made Baal Bareth their god. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them from the hand of all their enemies on every side. And they did not show steadfast love to the family of Jeroboam, that is Gideon, in return for all the good that he had done to Israel. How is it <laughs> that you search the Bible, you search the hymnal, I don't think the word fickle occurs <laughs> in <laughs> either one, and yet it surely belongs there. I, you get this. The men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, you and your son and your grandson also. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, this is so much like, so much like reading the news today. Um, we, hero, heal, hero, heal. We, 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 people go back and forth between H -E -E one and the other. H E E L, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the people are people are praised to the heavens and they're cursed to the depths and they're praised to the heavens and they're and depending on you know what happened lately and uh, Gideon will suffer this um, we'll see in the next chapter of them like uh, the whole um, Gideon's sons complaining you didn't honor my father and we keep we keep going out because of the let's move it in here see if we can get better light there um because the light behind us hmm uh and uh their praise oh we we're so grateful it just lasts for such a short time and gideon and this is how could this end badly right oh everybody give me your earrings <laughs> we'll melt them down and make something <laughs> uh, I suppose they didn't have their histories written down. This was oral history. They had these things passed on to them. It hasn't been that many generations since Mount Sinai and the Golden Calf. And, it, and, and Gideon is trying to do a good thing. He's saying, look, I don't want to be a king. Uh, and and uh, God should rule over you. And so he makes this ephod. It's a, it's a liturgical garment, you would say. Uh, something that is to... Down... Something that is to uh, to be used in worship to to discern the will of God. You come to the to worship at the Ark of the Covenant. Um, that they would they would use this to try to tell what God's will is, and they whore after it. In other words, they worship it. They come and they use this. As a superstitious item, a, a lucky rabbit's foot, a, a magic eight ball, a uh, uh, a tool to manipulate God. Ooh, we'll go to the ephod and uh, and see what we can get from God, and not not a loving, trusting relationship with their heavenly Father. 
And so the land has rest. That is, they're not oppressed by an enemy. They're not uh, conquered by some foreign power. But uh, what they still haven't learned, Gideon himself has not. He, he takes many wives and concubines. He has 70 sons. Uh, this was not God's will. This was not what God commanded of them. A man shall leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife and the two become one flesh. Or two or three or four or 50 or... No. And so, the consequences. Family strife. And in the family of Israel... The same kind of strife. The same inheritance from the, from the unfaithfulness of Abraham. And then the unfaithfulness of Isaac, the unfaithfulness of Jacob, the unfaithfulness of all their ancestors. And so they did not show steadfast love to the family of Gideon in return for all the good that he had done to Israel. As soon as Gideon died, the people turned again and whored after the veils. I think that this could be written of our history. The beautiful thing, though, about thinking about that, as depressing as it sometimes can be when you read the news, is to recognize that God continued to work with them and pursue them. And they go back and forth, but for every back, there is a forth. And for every down, there is an up. God brings them back. It's a tumultuous family. And sometimes in our family histories, we know what that's like. And yet, God is faithful. And his love is persistent and continuous, even during his punishment and his discipline. We give thanks for God today. On a Saturday, oh, however hard the week may have been, Hey, a day of rest today, a day of worship tomorrow, a day to be with the Lord both days. Father in heaven, we give thanks to you that you delight in us as inexplicable as that, as that is to us when we look at ourselves and our actions and our history here. Lord, you delighted in Gideon in your people, when they did some simple thing, when they got something right, what a joy. Lord, when they turn to you, what a blessing. Grant that we may turn to you today. And without having to fall away and go worship something else, Lord, let us turn to you again and again and find always there our real blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great Saturday.